I think the vast majority of people pretty much knew that LaMelo Ball was going to be really good, but I don't think a lot of people expected him to become this good this fast. Now, if you're a fan of basketball, you've likely been watching LaMelo Ball since he was a kid, following the Ball brothers through their basketball journeys and seeing them grow up into the players that they are now. You also probably remember all the ridiculous antics of LeVar Ball. The antics of the Ball brothers' father resulted in a lot of criticism being directed their way, despite them not having much of anything to do with it. A lot of people called the Ball brothers overrated, not real NBA talent, etc., and simply were being given so much recognition because of the antics of their father but they've proved a lot of the haters wrong over the past few years. Lonzo Ball took a few years to really come into his own, despite him improving each year of his career, and now he's an integral part of what looks like a contending Chicago Bulls team. LiAngelo Ball is still trying to find himself a place in the NBA, having had multiple G League contracts and practice team appearances so far, but he's still fighting for a regular roster spot. But LaMelo Ball is here, and he's the real deal. It took him next to no time to find a place in the NBA. Going third overall in the 2020 NBA Draft to the Charlotte Hornets, we saw him take home the Rookie of the Year award after having a really solid rookie season, putting up 15.7 points, 7.7 rebounds, and 8.3 assists per game on pretty solid efficiency for a rookie. But this season, we've seen him get even better and I don't know if anyone expected it to happen as quickly as it did. So in this video, we're going to take a look at where LaMelo Ball has made improvements in his game, what he's doing differently than last year, and at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you what I think the ceiling is for LaMelo Ball as a player. We're going to be covering a lot in this video, so be sure to stick around to the end. Let's get right into it. Now, I'm sure a lot of you remember the infamous game from LaMelo Ball where he scored 92 points in high school. He shot 30 of 39 on two-point shots and 7 of 22 from the three-point line. This game received a lot of criticism, primarily because when you watch the footage from the game, it was a lot of half-slash-near-half-court heaves and cherry-picking leakouts on fast breaks. So, prior to his time in the NBA, there were plenty of critics who didn't think his scoring was going to translate to the NBA. But that has definitely not been the case. LaMelo has managed to progress from a 15 points per game score to now putting up a clean 20 points per game. While there are still definitely some areas in his scoring where he could improve, he's definitely gotten noticeably better. One area of his game that's stronger than ever is his quick first step. He's really good at quickly accelerating and using that quick burst to get his way to the rim. He's also got such a crafty handle that he really has little to no issue carving up the defense and making his way towards the basket. He's also got a really solid floater game, and he's able to hit off-balance runners and catch the defense by surprise with his quick releasing floater. But his finishing ability, while promising, isn't quite there yet in terms of efficiency. He's only finishing at a rate of 55% at the rim this year, so it's much too early to call him an elite finisher just yet. But that's not the aspect of his scoring that I want to talk about. The most exciting aspect of his scoring ability that has me really excited to see what he's going to become is his three-point shooting ability. Now, it's one thing for a guy to be a good three-point shooter. It's another thing for a guy to be an elite three-point shooter, nonetheless be such a good one in their second season. He actually averages in the top 10% of the NBA in terms of three-point shot distance with 26.5 feet, yet he's still hitting his three-point shots at a rate of 39.1%, a really respectable solid clip. He's also really good at just pulling the catch and shoot shots when he gets them at the top of the key, and he's hitting them at a 41.8% rate. 
One interesting thing that I found was that despite him ranking in the bottom 20% of the league in terms of three-point shot quality, he ranks in the top 20% of the league in three-point shot making. He's actually a really, really good three-point shooter. He knows just how to use his teammates' screens to create a good look for himself, and his release, as weird as it looks, is so unique and quick that it's kind of difficult for the defender to adjust for. We saw this kid take so many deep threes when he was in high school and younger, and it paid off because he's still taking and making those deep threes in the NBA. It seems like a lot of his threes are usually two or three steps behind the three-point line. He's becoming one of the best limitless range guys in the NBA. Coaches used to hate these kinds of shots, but the NBA has come so far in terms of its progression, in terms of the three-point line, that if a guy can take and make these ridiculously deep shots, then you might as well let him. This is opening up a lot of opportunities for LaMelo to get his teammates wide open shots, and that leads me to my next point. I covered a lot about scoring gravity in my most recent video about Steph Curry, which you can check out on my channel, but the general idea of scoring gravity is that it's the defensive attention that a player draws due to their scoring ability. Now that LaMelo is coming into his own as a scorer, he's demanding way more defensive attention. Since LaMelo Ball is such a good passer, this creates all sorts of problems for defenses. You can't let LaMelo score because he's legitimately reliable from deep and at the rim now. We all know he's capable of throwing up incredible alley-oops, and he can make cross-court passes look like absolutely nothing to him. But let's look here at this play. LaMelo has the ball at the top of the key, and PJ Washington comes to set the screen on Lonzo. Vucevic is playing high instead of in drop coverage, and LaMelo drives towards the elbow with both Lonzo and Vooch collapsing on him. Washington pops out to the top of the key, LaMelo is easily able to kick it back to him for an easy three-point shot. He made the most of Vooch's defensive mistake and was able to turn it into an easy three for PJ Washington. He's frequently making really smart passes out of double teams to the open man. Not only is he just a legitimately well-rounded passer, being able to operate in the pick and roll and in set pieces, but he's also able to improvise and draw the defensive attention necessary to get his teammates an open shot. When you look at his box creation, which is a measure of open looks a player generates for his teammates per 100 possessions, he's generating 13 open looks, which is good enough for the sixth most in the entire NBA. He actually ranks in the 90th percentile in most advanced playmaking metrics according to basketballindex.com. He is such a dangerous offensive weapon, and when you couple that with the fact that he's coming into his own as a defender, his game is really starting to paint a bigger picture. So with all of this being said, what is LaMelo's ceiling? Well, to me, it's as high as he wants it to go. He doesn't have the physical limitations of some other guys, and he has all the tools to become an elite player. I see no reason he can't be a perennial all-star and even secure a fair number of all-NBA selections in his career. Not many guys are capable of doing what he does, and the point guard forward hybrids are the future of the NBA. With the way this Hornets team is being built around him, there's no reason he can't fight for an MVP later on in his career, especially if the roster continues to be fleshed out and the Hornets are able to create a legitimate contender. So what do you think that LaMelo Ball's ceiling is? Be sure to let me know in the comments below, and as always, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I'm posting NBA content all the time, so if you like this kind of stuff, you're definitely not going to be disappointed. Be sure to leave a like on this video because that's the number one way you guys can help support me with the YouTube algorithm and get this video recommended to more people. Thank you all so much for watching and for supporting me. I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks.